Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. In the previous video, I showed you how to use Steamworks to join lobbies with your friends, and now I'll be showing you how to use Steamworks to grab their names and their profile pictures to display inside of the Unity UI. I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. So to save us some time, I've already set some stuff up. If you want access to this project, you can go down below and find the link to my GitHub, and on there I'll have a repository for mirror multiplayer tutorials, and inside here you can find assets, tutorials, Steam profile, and here's all the stuff for today. So we've got a single scene that I'm in right now, and if I go to my build settings, you'll see it's the one, uh, one scene that's in here, so you can drag it in if it's not already there. And then uh, the lighting settings doesn't really matter. Script, I've got three scripts, two of them are empty, so we've got the My Network Manager, which is just an empty custom network manager ready for us to code in today. I've got the Player Info Display, which is the script that will handle displaying the player's name and icon image, that's also empty, except from the fact it inherits network behavior. And then I've got the Steam Lobby script from last time. So last in the last video, we used Steam Lobby to be able to join our friends and host a game using Steam. So what we have here, this is all from last time. I won't be recoding this because it'd be a waste of time, but we'll be building on top of it. So that's the code setup. And as for the scene, we have the network manager using the network manager I just showed you, the empty one. And we have the offline scene as this scene. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, the player prefab, I'll show you in a second. And then on here, it's just the Steam Manager, Fizzy Steamworks Transport, and the Steam Lobby script, just the exact same as in the last tutorial. And if we do go to prefab, so prefabs, player, you'll see here what I have is I have the player object, just you know something to see them. And then above that, I have a canvas. You see here, here are the canvas settings if you want to copy it. Um, it's a world space canvas, that's the important part. It doesn't actually need a graphic raycaster if we don't want that. And it also doesn't really need the, the canvas scaler. Um, for the image, we've got a raw image, not a normal image, because normal images reference sprites that we've got in our project. But we're going to be loading profile pictures from Steam, so we can't just drag it in and reference it. We have to, in code, create a new texture by streaming the image from, from Steam. It's a bit more complicated than normal, that's why we're using a raw image, so we can actually make the image at runtime. And then finally, just a simple text mesh Pro text element to set the display name. Here are the settings if you want to copy those. That's enough of that. Let's actually get into making it. So let's head over to the code. What we want to do first is we want to go to our Steam Lobby script because right now uh, this is all contained. All the Steam stuff is in here. We don't have access to any of it externally, but we do need to, in our player info display script, be able to load some stuff from Steam. So we need to actually expose this uh, Steam ID, wherever it is, the, the Lobby ID. We need to make it so we can grab this externally. And there's different ways you can do this and pass it around. But for ease of use, I'm going to make a static getter. So I can say uh, public static, and it's going to return a C Steam ID, which is the kind of Steamworks way of storing the ID. So C Steam ID, we've used it plenty of times in this script, and we're going to call this the lobby ID. And I'll make it a get private set. So we can read it from anywhere else, but we can only set it inside here because it's private. And the place where we're going to go set it is down where the lobby is created. So on lobby created. Uh, probably just before we start the host, we want to say the lobby ID is equal to, and it's actually equal to this. We already have it, so let's set it here by cut and pasting it, and then we can now just reuse the variable here. So the lobby ID, uh, what's it saying here? I have not put a semicolon, that's the problem. Okay, um, we're going to store that in here, and it allows us to then, on the server, remember, this is, this is only on the server or the host, um, we can now say Steam lobby dot lobby ID to read the current lobby ID. Now over in the player info display script is where we want to handle the logic for grabbing the name and the image and then setting it in the UI. So we need reference to those two UI components, which is a raw image, call it profile image. And we want reference to the text element, so TMP text, and we'll call this display name text. Like so. Now, if you've used Mirror before and you want to sync the person's name, you'll make a sync var for a string and just sync the name between the server and the clients. But since we're using Steam here to grab the name, we don't need the server to grab the names from Steam then sync them to the clients. It's kind of just an extra unnecessary step and it adds more complexity. What we can do is just sync from the server the ID. So we can say, you know, this player is ID whatever on Steam. And then the person that's playing, so me as player one, I can just grab the data I need from Steam. I can use the Steam Net, uh, Steamworks API to grab the image and the name. 
that makes our lives a lot easier. So we only need one sync var, and that's going to be a ulong, which will be their Steam ID. So it's a sync var, uh, private ulong Steam ID. Ulong is just the data type they choose to store Steam IDs, and it's effectively a, a big integer. Um, and what we want is we want to have a callback for when we receive this. So we'll say hook equals, and we'll say name of, let's make a method for handle Steam ID updated. So whenever we get a new Steam ID, I wonder if, does this actually work or do I have to write it myself? How's it going to help us? Oh, it did help us. But this should be a private void and it should take in uh, two ulongs, so a ulong old ID or old Steam ID and a ulong new Steam ID. And we'll move this down because we don't want it up in all the fields. So let's put it down here. And just to organize the code, we'll make a region for the server code uh, and region. And we'll make a region for the client code and end the region. It'll help it hopefully help you guys like to see what code goes where. So this is a client side thing. The client should know when the Steam ID is updated. As for the server code, we just want a way to be able to set it. So let's just make a setter. So a public void set steam ID that takes in a ulong steam ID. And we can just say this.steamid equals steam ID. So now we've made a way for the server over in the network manager to set the ID for this user. So let's go do that in there. The best time and place to set this data is when we add the player. So we can override the add player on server add player. We still want to do the base logic, which is to basically make the player. And after we've done that, we then want to set their Steam ID. So the way we can do this is we can first of all grab the Steam ID. So we can say, see Steam ID, Steam ID is equal to, and inside Steam matchmaking, what you can do is you can say get a lobby member, and we just want uh, this. We can get the lobby member ID. And it takes in two variables. It takes in the lobby ID, and then the index of the member. So the, the lobby ID is actually going to be that static variable we made earlier. So this is going to be the steam lobby dot uh, lobby ID. And then the second parameter, let's put this onto a new line so we can see, is the index of that member in the lobby. And that's actually going to be the same as the index of the member in mirror. So what we can do is we can say num players minus one. It's minus one because it's an index. You start counting from zero as opposed to one. So we need to do this. And that gets us the Steam ID of the person who just joined. And with that, we can then say uh, on that player script, so we can say, let's say player info display equals, we can grab from the connection, the player info display script. And then we can say player info display dot set Steam ID, Steam ID. But the problem is we want to store a ulong because we can't we can't sync this C Steam ID object. So what we can do is inside this it actually stores the ulong. So we can just say this dot m underscore Steam ID. And now what happens is a player joins the mirror server. We go grab their ID from Steam, and then we grab the component on their player object and set the ID. And that will then jump over here and set the Steam ID. Then by setting the Steam ID, it's a sync var, so the clients will now receive the new Steam ID, and from here, the clients just now need to go to their Steam and grab that person's name and image. So wouldn't it be nice if we could just write two lines of code and have it work? One line to set the name, and one line to set the image. It's not going to be that easy though, sadly. Names, pretty easy, they're just strings, you know, string from Steam, put it into string from Unity. The problem is the image, we need to actually get the image from Steam, convert it into a byte array, use that byte array to build up a texture inside Unity and set that in the UI. It's a bit more complicated, but I'll be going through it with you now. Let's get the name out of the way because that's really simple. So we need to convert this ulong back into the way that Steam likes it. So var c steam id equals a new c steam id with the new steam id like so. And now we've got it converted back so we can use this c steam id object. And with that, we can set the display name text dot text to be equal to, and we can just grab the name from Steam. So in Steam friends, which does work even if you're not friends, um, get friend persona name, and it wants us to pass in their ID. So see Steam ID, and it'll give us back their name. Simple, that's the name. As for the image, as I said, it's a bit different. 
Uh, with images, you have to actually load them from a local cache. So how it works is you say, Steam, please get me the image for this person. And if you already have it cached locally, it'll just use that and it'll be instant, effectively instant. But then if you don't have it, you'll have to download it. And downloading takes time and you don't want your game to freeze until you've finished. So the way it works is we can use the callbacks just like we did in the in the lobby. If we head over here, we use these callbacks. We can use one for loading avatar images. So we can say here, um, if you already have it, use it. If we don't, just load it from Steam. And once it's loaded, then do it. So there's two scenarios. Either we already have it locally and we just use that, or we don't and then we get it. And when it, we've got it, then we use it. So let's do the simple way first, or the, the simpler way, which is just say int, uh, we'll say image ID. So this is gonna give us an ID and you get it from Steam friends dot get large friend avatar and we'll pass in their ID. And if you read here, it says, um, get the image avatar of the current user. And it's going to be well, zero if there's no image set. It'll be minus one if the image is yet to be loaded. In this case, wait for the callback. So what we'll say is, if image ID is equal to minus one, then it means it hasn't been loaded. So let's return. If it has been loaded, we can then say, let's set the profile image dot texture to be, and we'll make our own method down here. So let's make a private void. And we'll say, well, actually it's not void, it's going to be a texture 2D. That's what it's going to return, texture 2D. And we can call get steam image as texture. Now I did find this code online. I'll actually put a link to the source repository where I found this. I have changed it a little bit, but this helped in figuring out how to go about doing it. I'm not really an expert in you know image manipulation, but I, I figured it out enough to get this working. Um, so what we need to pass in here is the image ID. And this is given as errors because we're not returning it. So let's start building this method. So we need to build up a texture 2D. So let's make a texture 2D called texture. Let's set it to null by default and let's also return it. And then in the middle here is where we can actually fill it in. So first of all, we need to check if it's a valid image ID, which it should be. And if it is, it then also tells us the width and the height of the image. So we can say bool is valid. And we can use the Steam Utils class here. And we can say get image size. And it has here, first of all, the image, so I image. Secondly, the width, it gives us out. So we say out uint is the type it uses. Width and out uint height. Whoops, height. I can't type right now. Height. And it also needs a semicolon, of course. And now we can say if that is valid, if it's a valid image, then what do we want to do? We want to make our byte array. And this is gonna be our image. And we need to initialize it, so a new byte array, with the size of the byte array. Now, you might think it's just, you know, width times height, and there's all our image. The problem with width times height is that then only has one byte per pixel effectively. And we actually want four bytes per pixel for RGBA, for red, green, blue, alpha. So we can just times this number by four, simple. And then, we can say, we've got another valid check. We need to say if steam utils get image RGBA, and it tells you here, returns true if the image does exist and the buffer was filled out. So we pass in this image buffer and it'll fill in all the data for us. So we pass in, first of all, the image, which is the I image that we're passed in up here. Then our image uh, output, which is the destination here. This is what we're going to be using to fill in our unity image. So that's just image and uh, the buffer size, which is width times height times four. Uh, problem here is width and height are uints, and this one's an int, but you can convert between the two. So we can cast this to be an int like so. Then if that's valid, we can go down here and say if is valid. We want to finally make our actual texture. So we can say texture equals a new texture 2D, where the width is the width and the height is the height. But the problem is these are uint, so we have to cast them again. So int width and int height. And then uh, the texture format is texture format dot. And this is using RGBA32. And MIP chain, honestly, I'm not the person to ask what this means, but all I know is we set it to false. And then linear is true, that's the color space. And then that is set. And then with this texture, we can then load into this new texture the byte array from earlier. So we can say texture dot load raw texture data takes in a byte array, which is our image. 
And finally, once you're done, you call apply. So uh, texture dot apply. And we're done. It might have been a bit complicated, but this is how you load an image from Steam and convert it into a texture for Unity. If we look back up here now, we're setting this texture. The final thing to do is to make it work if we don't have it in the local cache, because right now uh, we return if we don't have it locally. So we need to use the callback to say, you know, if we load it at a later time, it'll probably only be a fraction of a second later anyway, then still do this. So what we can do is we can do what we're normally used to doing. So we go up to the top, uh, we can say here, uh, we can have a protected callback and the type is avatar image loaded. We'll call it avatar image loaded. And then we can say on start client, we want to set the callback. So we can say avatar image loaded equals callback, avatar image loaded. It's a quite a lot of the same thing here. And we can create it. And we need to give a callback, say what to do when we load it. So we'll say on avatar image loaded and semicolon. And if we go down, uh, I'll say let's do it here. We can make a private void on avatar image loaded. And it'll take in uh, the avatar image loaded parameter. And finally, with this, all we need to do is make sure the ID matches this person's ID. And if it does, then we can set it. Because we don't want to load a new image and set it for every single player in our game. When we load someone, we want only to set it for that player. So what we can do is in here, we can say if the callback dot steam ID, but that's as a C steam ID. So you can say dot steam ID, which gives us it as a U long. If that matches the Steam ID of this user, which we've got stored up at the top, if those are the same, or not the same, we can return. So let's say if that does not equal, then return. But if it does, we can then say profile image dot texture equals get Steam image as texture, and we want to pass in the callback dot uh, i image. Right. So, so it's this line is basically the same as this line, except we're using it here from the callback, and this is the entirety of the code. Back in Unity, just make sure your network manager has all these scripts on, everything is hooked up, We've got the player prefab, and on the player, make sure you've got the player info display. And as you see here, we need to hook up the profile image and the name text display, like so. One quick thing to note before you build is in the player prefab, uh, if you were paying extra, extra attention earlier, you'll have noticed this. But for the profile image icon, I've actually flipped it to be minus one scale because for some reason when it streams the data, it actually gives you the image upside down. So I just set this to be minus one, which then flips it the right way around. Just make sure you've got that. Otherwise, when you test this, your profile picture will probably be upside down. And it should be good to go now. If we are to build, let's see if it works. So I've built the game, but it's a bit easier for me to show you if I do it in the editor. So what I can do is I can hit start host and you'll see it loads me in, it loads in my image and my name, so it all works. But as an extra bit of proof to see that it works fully, I can invite my business partner, Mick. He can join through Steam. So I'll move my player to the side. And you'll see here, he just joined in. It has his image and his name on Steam. And it all works just fine. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Thanks as always for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Jake Nixon, Benjamin Hilda, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, LN, Fabian Reno, Malvin, John Selig, David McDermott, Exit, Birdodai, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, and Rene. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my patrons down below. If not, there are links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye.